Chris Kleiman has built a consistent winner in Manhattan. He has won at least eight games in four of his five seasons as head coach of the Wildcats, including a 10-win season and a Big 12 championship back in 2022. But this year, 2024, has a chance to be his best season yet. So welcome back to the Gridiron Expert, guys. Ready to break down the Kansas State Wildcats, their schedule and prediction for this upcoming season. As always, please continue to like, comment, subscribe, and share our videos. Check out everything down in the description below. That includes our website, thegridironexpert.com, home of our expert picks. Some of the best spread picks in the entire country for one of the lowest prices in the entire country. Go sign up for those today before the season starts because the earlier you sign up, the more exclusive access you get. Go sign up for our newsletter over on thegridironexpert.com as well and send us some of your team's gear to the mailing address down in the description below. We'd love to represent the Wildcats. Kansas, pick it up, man. We've got the Jayhawks represented, but we don't have any Kansas State gear. We'd love to represent your team in every single video. Again, all that information, all those exclusive offers down in the description below. So Kansas State, I love this team. I've loved this Kansas State team since they hired Chris Klein. I thought it was a phenomenal hire. It's panned out extremely well for them. Last year, another successful season, leading the Wildcats to a 9-4 and season with a bowl win over NC State. And it should be noted that Kansas State was so close to a special year. All four of their losses were by one possession, losing by three on like a 60-plus yard field goal to Missouri. They lost by eight in an upset to Oklahoma State, nearly beat Texas, losing to Longhorns by three in overtime, and then by seven to Iowa State in the season finale. All of those were very winnable games, and the Wildcats fell just short. They win just half of those, and they are more than likely in the Big 12 championship game, and if they win that, Texas isn't going to play off, and who knows what happens to the Wildcats. So they are much better than people realize, and this year, no exception. Look, you look on offense, and all I hear from Kansas State, or really outsiders, I should say, is they lose Colin Klein, they lose Will Howard, they're, they're going to fall apart, you know? They lose their coordinator, they lose their top quarterback, they are not going to be as good. And I say that's where you're wrong. They've got a new offensive coordinator in Connor Riley, being promoted from the offensive line coach to OC, but also Matt Wells, the former Texas Tech and Utah State head coach, Going to be calling some plays as well, serving as co-offensive coordinator. They have got a dangerous rushing attack, guys. Avery Johnson in at quarterback, I think will be one of the best quarterbacks in the Big 12 this year. Saul's limited time last season, obviously because of Howard being the starter, but 479 passing yards, five touchdowns, nearly 300 rushing yards, seven rushing touchdowns. His dual threat ability is going to give defenses nightmares all day long. So he's in at quarterback. Going to play very well there. Then they've got DJ Giddens back at running back after rushing for over 1,200 yards and 10 touchdowns last year. Then they add Dylan Edwards, the transfer running back from Colorado. And then you go, oh, they lose their top two pass catchers. They lose four offensive linemen. But then you go, oh, at wide receiver, they've got Jace Brown, who kind of was a uh, surprise star last year for the Wildcats. They add Keegan Johnson in from Iowa. And they add Dante Cephas, who didn't do much at Penn State last year, but back in 2021, had a 1,000-yard-plus reception season at Kent State. So this is a very good Kansas State team, guys. Its priority is going to be running the ball. Average over 200 rushing yards per game last year, but will have a better aerial attack than you think. Love the offense. Defensively, love it even more. Eight starters back, including five of their top six tacklers from last year after giving up just 21 points per game and only 373 yards per game. Outside of the 2020 COVID season, which was the worst season under Chris Kleiman, but who was it not for for many teams? COVID was a weird year. The Wildcats have never allowed more than 21.9 points per game. They've never allowed more than 375 yards per game outside of that season. Now they've got Austin Moore, the number one tackler, coming back at linebacker. VJ Payne back in the secondary, the number three tackler. Uh, Jacob Barish back after four interceptions leading the team last year. This is a dangerous Kansas State defense, guys. It was loaded at all three levels, especially in the secondary. And you look at their schedule and you go, holy cow, it is favorable as all get out. This is an unbelievable schedule for a Wildcats team looking to get back to the Big 12 championship. I'm going to tell you right now, they start 2-0. They'll beat UT Martin. They'll beat Tulane. Don't overlook Tulane, but the Green Wave obviously going through a new coaching change. John Summerall coming in from Troy. Got a lot of talent there. Not going to be an easy game at all, but I like Kansas State a lot better defensively in this game. Uh, obviously a size advantage like them in this game and consistency-wise better in this game. So Tulane, no slouch, but they will beat Tulane and they will beat Arizona to be 3-0. Arizona, a newcomer to the Big 12 this year, but this is a non-conference game. So this will not have any effect for either of these teams in the conference standings. So I guess a slight win there for both these teams. But 
more so of a win for Arizona because the Wildcats of Arizona, I believe, lose this game. You look at the Wildcats, guys. This is a team that wants to throw the ball. Noah Fafita, Tedero McMillan, Duke head coach, and Brent Brennan. They're going to be very solid offensively, which is why home field advantage and defense, especially in the secondary, wins out here. Kansas State, with all those factors in on a Friday night as well, so a short week for some of these teams, they're going to beat Arizona. They're 3-0. I think they cruise past BYU. The Cougars still aren't there yet. The offense only averaged 23.1 points per game. They'll improve, but the defense allowed 178 rushing yards per game. So while the Cougars, I think, can improve statistically by week four, I don't think they have it all together yet. Even though it's on the road in Provo, I think the Wildcats run wild. Literally run wild on the Cougars in this one. Should win by double digits, and they are 4-0. Then Oklahoma State, that's a big one, right? This is a game that's going to have a major impact on the Big 12 standings, two of the best teams in this conference. And last year, you look at the game last year, they went on the road to Stillwater, and Kansas State lost. They were 11.5-point favorites, but lost that game, 29-21 to to the Cowboys. And that kind of started Oklahoma State's surge. That upset win kind of propelled them to their hot finish that ended up seeing the Cowboys in the Big 12 championship game. But you do a deeper dive into that game last year in Stillwater. It's a game that Kansas State probably should have won. They had one of the worst games of the year by far. They committed three turnovers. They had 220 rushing yards, still lost. They threw a pick six to end the first half. Another turnover led to a field goal. So they gave 10 points, gifted 10 points to the Cowboys just off of turnovers alone. And despite all of that, they still had the ball with 250 remaining in the game to go down there and potentially tie the game up. So they overcame all of those struggles, nearly had a chance to go tie it, weren't able to convert, weren't able to get it done. But they played a horrible game and probably should have won that game. You take away the pick six, they win that game, right? If they just play conservative to end the first half, they probably win that game. Now they get the uh, Cowboys at home. Oklahoma State loaded with talent, tons of experience coming back from last year's squad, one of the most experienced teams in the country and in the conference this year. But Kansas State's home field advantage plays a big role. Oklahoma State's defense, I don't think, think takes the big step forward that they need to to stop this running game. And they beat the Cowboys to start 5-0 and heading into their bye week. Couldn't ask for a better start. They come out of the bye week, the hot start continues. They cruise past Colorado. I think Colorado's offense will certainly test this Kansas State defense, but the Buffalo's defense, nowhere near ready to compete with this electric of an offense, this electric of a rushing attack. The Buffaloes, everybody wants to be high on them this year. Again, you want to be high on them for a team that went 4-8, and eight, I'd pump the brakes a little bit in year two under Deion Sanders. They win that game, they're 6-0. and out. At West Virginia, tough place to play. Big time trap game for the Wildcats. Riding this high, 6-0, and oh, eyes on the playoff, eyes on the Big 12 championship, and you come across a West Virginia team that can match you step for step. Probably the first team that they're going to see this year, maybe with the exception of Oklahoma State, that can match the Wildcats step for step. The Mountaineers have a phenomenal ground game. Three guys coming back to rush for over 700 yards, including their dual threat quarterback in Garrett Green. The Wildcats, as good as they are defensively, still allowed nearly 150 rushing yards per game last year, and I worry about that against this West Virginia team that Arguably could be the best offense they face to this point in the season. Oklahoma State could challenge. Arizona could challenge. But West Virginia, no slouch. And that front seven for the Mountaineers, very, very solid. I think West Virginia at home forces Avery Johnson and the Wildcats to win this game through the air. Something they're capable of, but something they do not want to do. They take away the run. Kansas State doesn't know what to do. And the Wildcats fall for their first loss of the year to 6-1. and one. It's bound to happen eventually. They get out of the way in Morgantown. They come home and they take on Kansas in the Sunflower Showdown. This is a high-scoring game, right? If Kansas can stay healthy, this is going to be a very fun high-scoring game. Jalen Daniels and Devin Neal and their top three pass catchers are back in an ever-improving defense, slowly but surely under Lance Leipold. But as I do with a lot of these rivalry games, it's hard for me to pick a team. Hard, not always, but hard for me to pick a team that has shown their inability to win in the series. Kansas has lost 15 straight games in the series. The Wildcats have won 15 straight in the series, including a 31-27 win last year. Ultimately, what this comes down to is slight home field advantage, although the Kansas fans will be out in full force, but ultimately it's defense. Two teams that are going to be going at it, two great offenses. What defense do I believe can get a stop when it matters the most? And it's going to be Chris Kleiman's defense. It's going to be the Wildcats' defense. So give me the win. They're 16th straight over Kansas. They cruise past Houston, who they beat 41 to nothing last year. The Cougars will be undergoing a major rebuild once again with a new head coach and Willie Fritz. They cruise past them, enter the next bye week, and 
Cruise past Arizona State, another weak team in the Big 12. Talked about how favorable the schedule was. They're going to cruise past the Sun Devils. They're going to cruise past Cincinnati on Senior Day. Obviously, the Bearcats improved in year two under Scott Satterfield. Could make a bowl game this year, but nowhere near uh, well enough offensively or defensively to hang with the Wildcats, especially in Manhattan. So they go into their season finale sitting at 10-1. and one. We've got the Wildcats with this great of a schedule sitting at 10-1, and entering their season finale on the road at Iowa State. They are more than likely a top-10 team. They are a legitimate playoff contender considering the 12-team format now. Everything is looking great for them. And then they go to Ames. They have lost four of the last six games to Iowa State, including a 42-35 loss last year. where They allowed 488 yards of offense. 258 rushing yards, and allowed five touchdowns of 60 yards or more. Their defense could not get a stop against this Cyclones offense in the snow, we should add. Now they're going to Ames, which is a very difficult and very underrated place to play in an Iowa State team that returns 19 starters. They are loaded with talent. Iowa State was not supposed to be as good as they were last year. Won seven games, had a winning record. This year, they're going to be even better. They have one of the best defenses in the Big 12, no doubt about that. They've got a lot of young rising stars on offense that exceeded expectations last year. I think this game is about the same. I think this game is very close. Maybe not as high scoring as last year, but it will be a one-possession game, just like we've seen the last couple of years. But Iowa State, at home, on their senior day, gets the win. They steal the win over Kansas State, send the Wildcats to 10-2, and two, gives them their second conference loss of the season. Depending on what Utah does, depending on what Oklahoma State does, depending on what Iowa State does, depending on what Kansas does, that could either ruin their Big 12 championship hopes, or maybe it doesn't, and Kansas State still slips in and has their shot at the 12-team playoff because if you win the conference, you're going in. So they have their opportunity, guys, to get there. This is a loaded team. From top to bottom, I love the offense. I love the defense. They have a great home field advantage. They've got one of the best coaches in this conference. And they've got a one heck of a schedule to go along with it. Kansas State, I think, will be in playoff and Big 12 title discussion by season's end. I think at 10-2, and two, they have a great chance to make that Big 12 championship and still have their shot at getting in, even with the loss to Iowa State. But regardless, this will be the best regular season that Chris Kleiman's squad has had since he arrived here. His sixth year with the program, going to have a double-digit win season in the regular season. What they do after that, we'll have to wait and see how the rest of the conference shapes out and what the motivation for the Wildcats is like if they do fall short. But ultimately, Kansas State in for a memorable and exciting 2024 season. So guys, as always, thank you so much for watching us here at the Gridiron Expert on YouTube. Make sure to continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos, and check out everything down in the description below. That includes our website, thegridironexpert.com, home to our newsletters, home to those expert picks. Go sign up for those today. The earlier you sign up, the better, the more exclusive content you get. And we want you to become a member of our GE Nation. And once again, as always, thank you so much for watching. And we'll see you next time right here on the Gridiron Expert. Oh,